As many of you know, one of the most important tools for us content creators is a machine that we use to edit and compile all of our content on, whether that be photo or video. And I've spoken in the past about the fact that I use Final Cut Pro for my video editing, so therefore that makes the Mac ecosystem a clear winner for me. I've had plenty of experience using the M1 Mac Mini and an M1 MacBook Pro that my editor uses, so I thought it'd be really interesting to compare the real performance of the new 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro against the M1 Mac Mini I use daily. And I've seen quite a few comparisons on on YouTube, although I thought it would be quite interesting to make one myself that focuses primarily on the workflow that I use with my Lumix cameras. So in this video, I'll be talking about my general experience using these devices and of course how they compare in terms of video editing capability. And I run a few tests like, you know, rendering times, export times, and just general scrubbing and a more taxing timeline that will bog down another computer, for example. And I'll be doing this both in Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So therefore, your Resolve users are not left out and you can see exactly how these machines have handle the NLE of your choice. So yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so before we get into the performance of these two machines, I'll quickly start by listing the specs of both the laptop and the Mac Mini for some context as to what I'm working with. So the Mac Mini has 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of internal storage with the standard M1 chip inside. And then the M1 Pro MacBook Pro has the same 16 gigabytes of unified memory, but with one terabyte of internal storage and of course the newer M1 Pro chip inside. My first impressions with the new MacBook Pro have been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And the most noticeable improvement for me is definitely the new ProMotion displays that all these machines ship with. I think Apple call them the Liquid Retina XDR displays, but all you need to know is that they're extremely sharp with a huge dynamic range, making them absolutely perfect for the kind of work that I'm doing. Of course, the advantages of the new screen technology will only become apparent if you actually do get one of the new MacBook Pros in front of you, and then of course compare it to an older MacBook Pro that you're using if you are using one. But all I can say is that when you are using it, you definitely notice the increase in performance and of course that added dynamic range and just all that stuff that we absolutely love to have at our disposal when we are editing video and photo. And of course, being pro machines, there is a big expectation on the performance that they deliver. And I must say that I wasn't completely blown away by the performance of this laptop when comparing it to the M1 Mac Mini that I use daily. I mean, the performance is incredible, but I didn't really notice a huge jump in performance off the bat. And it does feel slightly smoother when I am scrubbing through 4K or 6K media on my timeline in Final Cut, but I've never personally experienced much lagging with my M1 Mac Mini. Okay, so now it's actually onto the performance of these machines, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare all three of these machines, so the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, the standard M1 MacBook Pro that my editor uses, and the M1 Mac Mini that I use on a daily basis. And what we'll do is we're gonna do a quick test in Final Cut Pro to start off with, um, just an export test on a 4K timeline that has a bunch of 4K footage, all shot with the internal codecs of the Lumix S5, um, stacked up on top of each other, as well as a few multicams on that stacked 4K stuff as well, so there's quite a lot of stuff going on in this project, color grading, and of course music running in the background. And what we'll do now is I'll just show you real, real quick the comparison in terms of the export time. So here we go. So something that I didn't notice whilst doing this test is that none of the machines were actually jumping ahead from the other ones, if you like. Like they all stayed pretty level pegging when they were performing this export test on the same timeline. And you'll see now what the results are. But I think it's quite shocking that how, you know, sort of close they all are. Okay, so as you can see here, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro finishes the export test at 1 minute 32 seconds. And then the M1 Mac Mini finishes it just afterwards at 1 minute 37 seconds. And then the M1 MacBook Pro does it in 1 minute 40 seconds. So we're talking a five second discrepancy between the M1 Mac Mini and the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And to be honest, five seconds is really not that much time. Um, it's not detrimental to my life or my editing or my workflow. So therefore, I don't think that you're gonna have too much difference when it comes to exporting quite heavy timelines. Um, therefore, that sort of makes the M1 Mac Mini, in my opinion, the winner considering the price point. And then the next test that we did was just scrubbing on the timeline of all of these clips. And what we're doing is we're scrubbing on each timeline, pausing, then pressing play, scrubbing again, pausing, pressing play, and all that sort of stuff. Because that can actually be quite taxing on the computer when you're basically jumping between different clips in a 4K timeline and then choosing to start or stop your, you know, sort of playhead, if you like, whilst, you know, doing all that scrubbing. And I have to say that all these computers did absolutely fine with this. And then while doing this test, we noticed that the M1 Pro MacBook Pro was probably the smoothest of the three, but, you know, the 
the difference is like literally sort of like splitting hairs. There's not much in it at all. And then of course the M1 MacBook Pro for some reason was a little bit more laggy and slow compared to the M1 Mac Mini. But then again, all three machines were not sort of far off of each other when doing this test. So therefore I say that if you are editing on Final Cut Pro and you'll want to do general scrubbing, playback and stuff of 4K clips, you know, stacking lots of stuff on top of each other and want, you know, a decent export time, then honestly, I'm going to say that the winner is going to be the M1 Mac Mini for me, purely because you can pick one up now for less than a thousand pounds. And I mean, I've had this one now, you know, since it came out in 2020, so for two years, and it's still the main machine that I use. So if you're a Final Cut Pro user, go ahead and get the M1 Mac Mini. But of course, if you do want a, uh, you know, like an upstate MacBook Pro or something that's a bit more portable, then the M1 Pro will probably be the best shout. So yeah, that's my takeaway for Final Cut Pro. Another thing that I've been doing a lot recently on the new MacBook Pro is actually building a new website for my business using the sponsor of today's video, Zyro. It's so important to have your portfolio on show online if you're looking to pitch to new clients. And honestly, the best way to do that is with a sleek website. And I've never truly been happy with my company's website. However, with Zyro's fantastic range of templates and the extremely easy to use platform, I finally feel like I'm on the right tracks. It's also incredibly affordable, and using my discount code, you can enjoy up to 71% off of your chosen tariff, along with a custom domain, and three months free with any yearly plan. You also get a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support, so you will never be left high and dry. Whether you're just starting out or already have an existing portfolio that you want to spice up just a little bit more, then definitely check out Zara because they are doing great things. And after messing around with their templates for myself, I'm actually completely sold and I'm in the process of making the website I've always wanted to using their platform. And there's a link in the description of this video, so please check them out if any of this has resonated with you and please do not be afraid to show them some love. Thanks again to Zara for supporting this channel. So now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, we did the exact same test, the exact same thing, and I'll show you exactly how that looks between the M1 Mac Mini and the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. We didn't actually use the M1 MacBook Pro for the DaVinci Resolve test, purely because my license only covers two machines, and those are the machines that I've got a license to. So when editing inside of Resolve on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I've got to say that the actual experience was actually really nice. Um, you could very, very easily and comfortably scrub on a 4K timeline of colored clips that had already been processed inside the color tab and you could go back you know sort of scrubbing playing pausing all that sort of stuff with minimal drop frames and quite smooth playback even at your full resolution so that's actually really nice and almost the same can be said for the m1 mac mini with the fact that there was actually a little bit more lagging and stuff on that same timeline with all the coloring and all that sort of stuff but when you drop that down to a half resolution that clears up completely and it's really really smooth so the m1 pro was definitely better inside of resolve and by the way using the new resolve of 18 that's meant to be optimized for the new Apple Silicon chips. So yeah, I mean the M1 Pro for me was the better option, um, you know, sort of computer if you are using Resolve. But then again, the M1 Mac Mini is really, really close behind that. And if you don't mind dropping to half resolution when you are doing your uh, video editing, then you will not have any issues whatsoever. And the actual coloring process as well was actually really smooth on both of them. Like there was no lagging or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I think both machines get a massive thumbs up when it comes to Resolve editing. The biggest difference that I actually saw between these two machines in Resolve was the export time between the two and doing the same timeline that's been colored with 4k clips on it playing back Blackmagic RAW since I'm sure that a lot of you guys that are using Resolve will be you know using the Blackmagic RAW codec um, I actually found that the uh, export time on the M1 Pro for the same timeline was 27 seconds and then on the M1 Mac Mini that same timeline was exported in one minute and eight seconds so that is actually quite a big difference and if you are someone that is exporting a lot then of course the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is going to be the one for you. So to summarize, what I'd probably say is that if you are looking for, you know, the absolute optimum performance at this current time from the offerings from Apple, then of course get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max machines. They're obviously going to be slightly better than the original M1 machines. But then again, if you are someone that's trying to conserve your money a little bit more or wants to sort of split that budget that you do have, you know, to new lenses or potentially something else that could benefit what you're doing in your business, then I definitely recommend taking that route down. So of course, I do actually have the Mac Mini and I do own the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and I spent about two and a half grand on this laptop. And if I'm being brutally honest with you guys, I rarely use it. Like, I'm using the M1 Mac Mini so much more for my day to day editing, purely because I like plugging in a nice big 4K IPS display, like this LG one that I use all the time. And editing on a laptop for me in clamshell mode at home feels like I'm just destroying the battery. So it only really gets used if I want to sit, you know, down in the front room and edit there, or if I am out on a 
and about, like I said earlier. So yeah, I mean, that's sort of my takeaway from it. I would say that if you are in the market for a new laptop, however, then the M1 Pro versions or the new MacBooks would definitely be my choice compared to the older M1 MacBooks, pretty because they are quite a bit faster than the M1 MacBooks. And that screen is so much better. And for me, that's what makes this machine completely worthwhile is how good that display is. So when I am editing on the fly, I know that I've got a really, really nice, rich and vibrant display that I can use for very, very accurate color renditions and of course, for just displaying any HDR content. So yeah, I mean, for two and a half thousand pounds, is it worth it? Yes, I would say it is, but no, if you're looking for performance at home, like if you're going for home performance, then just get the M1 Mac Mini for like less than a thousand pounds, or you know, when you upgrade it to the 60 gigabytes unified memory, I think it comes in a little bit more expensive than that. But yeah, for around the sort of thousand pound price point here in the UK, you seriously cannot go wrong with the M1 Mac Mini. And like I said, I've been using this machine now for two years, ever since it came out for my day to day editing, and I do a lot of editing every single day, and this machine still hasn't let me down. So yeah, yeah, hopefully this video was somewhat useful to you guys. I don't know whether it was. It feels like it was a bit all in the air, you know, me recording it. I feel like it was everywhere. But yeah, hopefully it actually becomes a concise and easy to follow video. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was interesting and informative. And if it was, then please consider subscribing because I do make a lot of content here surrounding, you know, Panasonic cameras, um, you know, video editing, all that sort of stuff. So if that's your vibe, then this channel will be for you. And yeah, hopefully I shall see you in the next one.